Hello everyone, welcome back to another Monday. We are starting a new game today. We are starting Nancy Drew, The Phantom of Venice. It is number 18 in the Nancy Drew game series. As with all the new games, we are going to start by looking at the case file. Thanks to Prudence Rutherford, the wealthy socialite whose necklace I helped recover while solving that scarlet hand case a while back, I'm on my way to Venice, Italy. Apparently, someone there has been dressing up in a mask and cape and stealing valuable pieces of art. The news media call him the Phantom, not only because of the way he dresses, but because he leaves behind so few clues. Prudence, who loves Venice and belongs to an organization dedicated to preserving the city's art, is outraged the thief hasn't been caught yet. So she talked someone she knows at the GDIF, the Italian version of our FBI, into having me help the police in their investigation. She arranged for me to stay in Venice in the palazzo she used to own, which now belongs to a well-to-do widow named Margarita Foberg. Beyond that, all I know for sure is that I'll be working undercover, and as soon as I arrive, the police will send me something that will lead me to my assignment. What it will be? I have no idea. But am I excited? Oh, see. Sí. Okay. So, for once, Nancy is going somewhere, not on a vacation and falling into a mystery. She is starting off in one. Looks like we'll be needing this Italian dictionary and the plane ticket. Yeah, junior detective, why not? started out so well. I mean, what could be better than waking up in Venice, Italy? What just happened? That was weird. Who's this? Oh. Venice is so beautiful this time of year. Hildy? I found some lovely mosaics that I picked up from a friend. I'll send them your way once I find some time from Helena. Hmm. Let's use our dictionary. No? No? Not, not use our dictionary on that? Okay. Uh, what about this one? Nope. Okay. This is a very red room. An interactive guide to Venice. Oh, Venice was built. Most of the 150 canals for which the city is famous are natural, filled with brackish water. They are the channels which flowed between the islands upon which the city was built. Some 409 bridges span these canals. Bridges that were built over smaller canals are often privately owned, which means its owners can and do charge a toll to walk across. To make matters worse, many of the smaller bridges have neither roofs nor walls, so that crossing them at night often proves extremely challenging and wet. Hmm. Major sites of Venice. The almost two-mile stretch of water known as the Grand Canal is perhaps Venice's most well-known feature, with its water buses, gondolas, and water taxis. The activity on the canal itself is almost as fascinating as the, as the grand and often colorful palaces on its shores. Many of the most spectacular sites in Venice are located near the open square of San Marco. Most prominent, of course, is the Cathedral of St. Mark, 
which was completed in 1094. Its mixture of architectural styles is indi indicative of the multitude of forces that helped make Venice into a vibrant cultural center. visit to Italy would be complete without at least one visit to the gelato shop. Contrary to popular belief, the Italian ice cream known as gelato did not get its name because, it's con because it contains gelatin. Rather, it comes from an Italian word which means frozen. Like ice cream with which most Americans are familiar, gelato is made from whole cow's milk and sugar which are stirred while they are being frozen to form a dense creamy product. Oh. It's usually flavored with fresh fruit and contains less butter fat than ice cream. 4 to 8% versus 10 to 18%. And less air resulting in a healthier product with a more intense flavor. The best gelato is made daily. It must be kept in a special freezer and it's usually scooped out of trays instead of bins. Interesting. Oh! So, I think these m might be useful later. Sotto. So that's under? Sopra. On top of? Alla destra di. To the right of? Alla sinistra di. To the left of? Behind. Nella. Inside. Vicino. Lontano. So short and long. Hmm. Okay, we can't open the drawer. Let's go ahead and go out here. Ooh! Mm. Uh oh. Mm. You know mm. what? Mm. Let's just take all of them. <laughs> Why not? Oh my gosh, I can't get out of here now. Who are you? Hello, you must be the American Margarita mentioned. I'm Colin Baxter. I'm Nancy Drew. If you're looking for Margarita, she's up on the Altana, the rooftop garden. What are you doing, if you don't mind my asking? Right now, I'm restoring this 14th century mosaic, which means, without getting overly technical, I'm cleaning the tesserae that remain in place, repairing those that have been damaged, and replacing those that are missing with new ones custom-crafted to match. Is Margarita paying you to do this? She is indeed. As little as possible, of course. But, just between you and me, I do this for free. I became fascinated with art in general, and mosaics in particular, when I was at Oxford. Oxford University. That's where I'm from, actually. Oxford, England. At least, that's where I was born. I live here now, and intend to do so for a very long while. Although I say that with no small amount of guilt. Why do you feel guilty? People like me and Helena are the reason true Venetians are slowly going extinct. We foreigners come to Venice, fall in love with her, and wind up staying. High demand for food and housing results in high prices, which in many cases means the people who were born here have to leave because they can no longer afford to live here. If I could be granted one wish, it would be to have been born here. That way I would feel entitled to live here, and I would know how to speak Italian. You don't speak Italian? Much as it shames me to admit it, no. Languages don't come easily to me. 
And since I am able to do what I do without knowing Italian, you know, I have some slides of various tesserae. Not only are they enormously informative, but they're also quite beautiful. Would you like to see them? Sure. Marvelous. Here we go. Spectacular, isn't it? Lovely shade of scarlet. That's very bright. The hue is incredible, don't you think? Sometimes red is simply breathtaking. Why is it so bright? Now that's what I call violet. That's even kind of bright. The color is simply unparalleled. It's like it was painted by the sun. D yeah, it is. Why are they so bright? Such a delicate hue. What a luscious shade of lilac. D uh, okay, sure. That looks the same as the violet Look to me. Look at that! It couldn't be more perfect. Can, can we stop now? Sometimes red is simply breathtaking. Okay, well, I guess we'll end on a more... This one takes my breath. Oh. Yeah, okay. Awesome. Almost looks no. like an emerald, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, but I didn't want to see any more. I think I've I seen was, enough. I was just being Very nice well. to him. I thought I had at long last found a kindred spirit. Someone who shared my passion for beauty, for art. But you apparently are like everyone else. Interested only in what something is worth instead of what it offers the soul. No, no, please. I'd stay, but I really do need to be somewhere. Believe me, I think what you're doing is fascinating, and you obviously really know your stuff. In fact, that figurine in front of you, I've been dying to ask you about it. It's exquisite. What, this statuette? Yes, it is exquisite. It's an example of late Etruscan bronze work, no doubt cast some 2200 years ago. I'm not sure how Margarita came to own it, but she's very fortunate. It's almost impossible to find bronzetti of this quality outside a museum. You see, after they conquered the Etruscans, the ancient Romans melted down thousands upon thousands of statues like this just so they could make coins. Interesting. Shoot, I wish I had time to hear more. No, 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 no. You go on. We can talk more later. Oh, a parcel was just delivered for you. It's by the door. Thank you. So, okay. Uh, we'll go check that later. Oh, wait a minute. Now look at this. Oh. Um, what good is the dictionary if I can't use it? I, I, I know I'm not going to be able to use it on this. Don't put the... Sunny June. Don't put the name... Wait, Rollmeister? Don't put the names in English and then... Whatever else you have to write about them in Italian and not let me use the dictionary to translate. I don't like that. Buongiorno. And again, welcome to Carnas Costa. I see you finally decided to get up. Actually, I've been up for a while. Good for you. I got up, showered, and came straight up here. If it's a daytime and it's sunny, no matter the time of year, this is where you will find me. They say the sun gives you wrinkles and worse. And that may be true, but it also makes you tan. To me, to be tan is good. Your accommodations, they are to your liking? Oh yes, the room is wonderful. You do not mind having a roommate? Not at all. Ah. You are just being polite. <laughs> the last thing a young lady wants when she is on holiday is a roommate. I warned Prudence that you would have to share a room, but she said you had to come to Venezia this week and you had to stay here. And as we both know, what Prudence wants, Prudence gets. Have you gone outside the car yet? No, not yet. Just do not forget to take your key and lock the front door whenever you leave. This is not the Palazzo Grassi, but I do have uh, several valuable pieces of art. And with Il Fantasma, this phantom thief, running around and stealing everything, I prefer not to take any chances. I met the guy who's restoring the big mosaic in the main room. He's pretty intense. 
Colin Baxter? Uh, I do not know how any man can find happiness looking at pieces of painted rock all day. Talking to him, it's like taking a sleeping pill. Que barba! But they say he is good, and so he works for me. Who are they? Everyone I know. All my friends on casas like this one. And since something is always in need of repair, we are constantly on the lookout for good workmen. And when we find them, we trade them back and forth like you Americans trade recipes for cookies. Olivia von Helstein raved about the work he did for her. And what is good enough for the Countess of Schlosselbeck is more than good enough for me. How long have you lived here? Almost two years. Two wonderful but very expensive years. The city expects homeowners like me to maintain these old buildings. But who pays for everything? We do. The Restoration Council gives us nothing, not one single euro. It is criminal. You mean you can't afford it? You miss the point. Just because I can afford to pay does not mean I should. It is the... Uh, principle. It is the principle of the thing. Besides, being rich is something I like. If I am all the time spending money, I will soon be unrich. I'll talk to you later. Good, good. Her legs look- or her- like her face and arms look more tan than her legs did. Okay. Let's go not talk to him again right now. Let's go out. Oh! Ah! Oh, oh my goodness. I'm sorry. Here, I'll get those. <laughs> oh. You must be my newly arrived roommate. I'm Helena Berg. I'm Nancy Drew. Sorry for all the commotion when I came in last night. My plane got in three hours late. No need to worry about waking me up. I can sleep through almost anything. Well, I'm sure you have things to do and places to go, so I won't keep you. Oh, by the way, there's a parcel for you in the entryway. Ciao. Oh my gosh, I jumped almost out of my seat. She terrified me. I wasn't expecting that. Please find enclosed your bank card. You will find a convenient automatic teller machine in the Piazza San Marco. Please visit there immediately so that we may activate your account. Oh, okay. Check again. Okay. Oh uh, my. Where are we going? Um. Hmm. Can we look at the... Oh, no, we can't look at the paper now. Oh, great. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. This. No? Yes. Uh... Supposed to go to the Piazza San Marco. Okay. Where? Oh, right here. I found it. Why can't I go? I can't, oh. Oh, this is gonna take a minute. Can I go, can I just go here now? Okay, cool. That took a minute to find. That might, that might be a little bit better. After you read this, you will be provided with a pair of binoculars and a PDA. Using the binoculars, you will watch Antonio Fango 
a suspect in the recent thefts attributed to the phantom see crime dossier the window of his office and the argon building can be clearly seen from the rooftop okay wait from the oh, okay the rooftop the surveillance team at the entrance to the argon building will page you via the pda whenever fango enters an audio signal will alert you to his arrival a light on the pda will remain on as long as he is in the building any suspicious or unusual activity should be reported immediately using the PDA. Press the call button on the PDA keypad to reach your contact, Detective so Sophia. Background on Antonio Fango. Born June 1st, 1972. Kicked out of Tesla for cheating in December 1993, moved to Venice from Milan in March 2006, custom designs and installs communication and entertainment systems for homes and businesses through his company. He is its sole employee after the theft of the sword. Venice police received a tip that Fango may have been involved. Wiretaps and surveillance of his business and apartment have revealed nothing out of the ordinary. His con his contact with people is limited. About once a week, he buys an assortment of chocolates. He rarely eats out, often takes long, random, unaccompanied walks, has no criminal record. I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Got the binoculars and the PDA? Uh, P PDA? G whatever that put those back turn back around okay close summary of crimes attributed to the phantom successful disabling of complex alarm systems and a lack of crime scene evidence makes these thefts similar to those committed by the leo macchiano theft ring However, no contact between the Phantom and any member of the Macchiano ring has yet been discovered. January 4th, a Bible reported missing from the Palazzo. Theft may have occurred days earlier during New Year's Eve party when man wearing black cape and mask was seen on the premises, thought to be a party goer. January 18th, sword stolen from exhibit at the palace sometime between midnight and 4 a.m., Alarm system appeared to be set, but did not go off. No sign of forced entry. Guards saw nothing. Unusual on security cameras. Caped figure seen on nearby street just after midnight. January 22nd, original score of Verdi's stolen from... Okay, security cameras lost power at 2.16 a.m. When power was restored at 2.18 Item was missing at 223, caped figure wearing a mask moved past security camera on third floor. No alarms were triggered, no sign of forced entry. In January 25th, the chalice of St. Jervis, stolen from convenient, convenient, convent of St. Jervis sometime between midnight and 5 a.m. No property was damaged. Glass case that held chalice and alarm system were both intact. Nothing out of the ordinary was seen or heard. Wow. Okay. Now we can leave. Did we get the card back? Yeah. So my understanding now is that we have to go back here. What would be the quickest way to do that? Let's go here. And then here. We'll just keep going up and then walk. Okay. <gasps> That's my pager. Antonio Fongo is in his office. Time to go to work. Okay, cool. Do we have to. Oh, okay, no, we didn't. Cool. I thought we had to get our key out every time. Uh, binoculars. Uh, 
And now we wait. Nancy, what are you doing? Spying on someone. Studying the architecture. That's what I want to be, an architect. So I'm kind of boning up. You Americans always busy doing something. Can know ya. This looks interesting. I'd better go somewhere private and report this. Ciao, this is Nancy Drew. Yes, is this Detective Leporace? Si, but please, to you I am just Sophia. I'll remember that, Sophia. You have something to report? I think so. While I was watching Fongo, a pigeon flew to the window outside. Fongo got up from his desk, went over to the window, and took something off the pigeon's leg. Something very small. He removed something from the pigeon's leg. You are positive? Yes. He removed something, kind of studied it, then left the office. Maybe he is using a trained pigeon to communicate with someone. Yes. This could be true, because we know that by phone he talks to almost no one. Here is what we will do. I will deliver to you a tracking device. You will sneak into Fango's office when he is not there and feed it to the pigeon. After that, you can use your PDA to see in what direction it has flown. You want me to feed a tracking device to a pigeon? It will be very, very tiny. But I do not want to leave it at the ATM. If you go there too much, people will get suspicious. So we will leave it for you in the costume store in Campo Santa Maria Famosa. It will be hidden among the things there. You will have to find it. How will I know what it looks like? Very soon I will send a picture of it to your PDA. But you must locate the device quickly. If you do not find it in time, it will destroy itself. If that happens, we will hide another device. Your PDA will show you where we have hidden it. You want me to feed a tracking device that self-destructs to a pigeon? The self-destruct mechanism will automatically deactivate when you pick it up. And do not worry. The device will not hurt the pigeon after it is swallowed. And I'll be able to track it using my PDA. Sounds like this thing is going to come in very handy. It is from the GDIF. Military equipment is good. Well, guess I'm on my way to Campo Santa Maria Formosa. After you have fed the tracking device to the pigeon, you must do two things. You must find out where the pigeon goes when it leaves Fongo's, and you must discover what it is carrying. Call me when you know these things. You are good to help us, Nancy. We are very short-handed. Carnevale keeps the police very busy. I'll do my best. Ciao. All right, everyone. I believe that that is a good stopping point for today, and the next part we will be tracking down a pigeon. If you all enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like before you go, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you are new, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye guys!